You know, when you're first learning to write, you spend a lot of time practicing making your letters over and over, and learning the sounds that they all make, and how to organize them in an order to form actual words. Then a day comes when it's time to take that practice and the knowledge and apply it to telling a story or to convey a message. The practicing hasn't stopped exactly, you just continue doing it while you're communicating your ideas. This is what happened to me with my drawing when I turned four years old. I went from rendering simple vignettes like a cow or a bug, a pony, and I started to tell stories with my art by putting my subjects into environments and situations where they could live and interact. For some reason I started drawing scuba gear onto bears and pigs and placing them in the ocean where they could interact with sea life. Occasionally I'd try putting humans in the scene, but I kept feeling drawn back to my original concept of the bears and pigs. This obsession continued for several months. It was my primary artistic exploration when I was four. Just recently, I was cleaning out some files on my hard drive and I came across a few JPEGs of these old drawings. For the first time ever, maybe, I started to really look closely at the artwork and wonder where the obsession had come from. Kind of a strange, complex choice to make for a four-year-old. Kids are so weird anyway, and kid artists are especially interpretive about what they perceive even if the conclusions they come to are totally wrong. I wondered if maybe revisiting the old obsession might be overdue. It'd be interesting to deconstruct the path that resulted in scuba animals. Which brings us to this video. How would I go about rendering this subject as an adult? especially one who now has the experience of working as a paddy dive master, as well as a former member of the Society of Animal Artists, and a Disney animator comfortable with anthropomorphizing animals. I'm a very different caliber of artist this time around. Plus, this is just a kind of dead-end, pointless exercise, which is right up my alley. Sometimes drawing is just about having fun. So what did I discover by revisiting scuba diving bears and pigs? Well, the first thing I noticed was that I'd not lost any of my initial enthusiasm for the subject. It's an open invitation for experimenting. You think about the structure of the real animal and its range of motion, and then you play with applying some human motion in there as well. It made me remember watching TV shows featuring undersea film footage, like On the Wonderful World of Disney and The Undersea Adventures of Jacques Cousteau. Even as a landlocked little Texas kid, I loved those shows. I couldn't get enough sea creatures, and the idea of using scuba gear to swim with them is real boys adventure stuff. I started to realize the profound influence this all had on my adulthood. As for the bears and pigs, I can only assume these were a result of early attempts at engineering and structure. I discovered that if you arrange these simple shapes in this order, you get a bear. And if you take these other shapes and you put them in this order, you get a pig. I even noticed I had drawn a couple of scuba rabbits achieved by using this same method. 
I can only assume the epiphany must have come to me from looking at children's illustrations in a book or something. I wonder if kids are constantly revealing insights into their interests towards vocations that they'll eventually pursue. They probably manifest in such abstract ways that the clues are kind of hard to recognize. And parents tend to be so distracted anyway that I imagine most of the inspiration from their children goes mostly unnoticed. Needless to say, for me, scuba diving and painting eventually married into a lucrative career in a variety of ways. I'm grateful to have found a way to apply my love of diving as a tax deduction for part of my art business. It was a fun way to make a living for a while, but of course my interests have evolved into other subjects and choices as I've continued to grow as an artist. I think it's really important to be aware of the things that draw your attention, no matter how seemingly insignificant. Your best discoveries are made there. It might not be necessary to revisit your childhood obsessions, but it might be interesting to at least realize how they helped to lead you to where you are now. This is Ronnie Williford. Stay safe and happy, and by all means, get your paper dirty.